Shabbat Shalom! <laughs> it's Saturday, October 23rd, and I am here on this lovely Sabbath with Kylan and Malachi and Abinazar and Aaron. Hello! Shabbat Shalom! Shabbat Shalom! And Leela. And we're trying to learn this one Sabbath song, the second part of it. So, oh, I was going to put the, I'm going to put the picture. <laughs> I was going to try and put it in the comments, this picture, but whatever. Here's the song. So I'll hold it up while we try to sing it. Ready, guys? Ready, ready, ready? Ready. Okay. I need to see it too. I'm pausing it. I noticed you haven't looked at it once and haven't sang a note. You aren't looking at it at all either. You're trying. You're uh, coming over here jumping on me, but you're trying to clap along, so that's good. All right, I guess this is the last verse. <laughs> We'll keep doing that every week and then maybe we will learn it um in the description in the video is where we're gonna be reading from but first i was gonna show you these cute drawings that were already created abraham look at his sandals they're so cute and then that was malachi's and leora did this one it's parasha vayera that's what we're learning God gives Abraham a son named Isaac. It means laughter. It's very cute. So the blog entry was from October 22nd in 2013, and it's entitled um, Bereshit Genesis Highlights. He saw the light. Focus on Abraham and Lot. 
So when y'all are reading, I'll turn it to you. So Malachi, I'm going to have you read that first section from Acts. Try and read it nice and loud and clear, okay? Yep, nice and loud and clear. Therefore, repent and turn to God, so that your sins may be erased, so that times of refreshing may come from the Lord's presence, and he may send the Messiah appointed in advance to, for you. That is Yeshua. He has, he has to remain in heaven until the appointed time comes for restoring everything as God said long ago. When he spoke through the holy prophets, for Moshe himself said, Adonai will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your brothers. You are to listen to everything he tells you. Everyone who fails to listen to that the, to that the prophet will be removed from the people and destroyed. Indeed, all the prophets announced these days, starting with Shmuel and uh, continuing through all, all who follow. You are the sons of the prophets. You are included in the covenant which God made by which God made by your fathers when He said to Abraham, "By your seed will all families of the earth be blessed." So it is. You, you first that God has sent His servant, whom He has raised up, so that He may He might bless you by turning each one of you from your evil ways. I love the Torah. Of okay, the that's the commentary. Good job, buddy. Thank you. Awesome. Alrighty, so that's pretty awesome. I love verse 25, how it says, You are the sons of the prophets, and you are included in the covenant with, with which God made to your fathers. Isn't that cool? Yeah. All right, commentary. I love the Torah because it is alive. It is full, and its messages echo from ancient days into the turmoil all around us today. These texts tell the life story of people, real, flawed human. There are no attempts to pretty up any of the accounts of the lives of the patriarchs and matriarchs, for here in the flesh and bone realities, we relate these words with our own existence and find connection. <gasps> this is beautiful. Eyes. These are eyes? Yeah. Wow. Oh, I see the eyes. What's that? That's a song. Here. You want to color it more? Yeah. Yeah, put more colors on there. Yes. Then black. Oh, yeah, you could put black. You can put other colors, too. Do you have any colors, our own? Yep. Give him a color he can color his drawing with. Here, buddy. Make more colors. Shh. Okay, so, no, you can't. Today, we consider a relationship between kinsmen. That of Avraham Avinu, Father Abraham, and Lot, or Lot. Hmm? Not, not right at this moment. Maybe towards the end. That'll be cool. The last highlight in the blog called Stand and Walk went through the command of the Most High to Avraham to Lech Lecha to go forth for himself on his own accord with intention to spread the good news of the Lord to the known world. He took with him all that was his, all that which God had blessed him with, his possessions, his wife, his disciples, the son of his brother Nahor, Lot, it was in Haran that the relationship was birthed, and the fact that the Torah text says Lot went with him means more than the idea that Lot just didn't have anywhere else to go. The text shows us that among the disciples or souls that had been born in Avraham's house, who had heard the good news and embraced the monotheistic message of the one true God who offered an avenue for repentance and eternal life with him, among these disciples was Lot. Lot not only shared the same blood which flowed through Abraham's veins, but he shared in his passion. He learned at the feet of Abraham and was taken in by him. He sought to be like 
uh, is Abba. He sought to be like his teacher, and we will see this more and more in the text. When Abraham was asked by the Lord to uproot himself and go forth from all he had ever known, Lot went with him in support. All right. Um, Kylie, why don't you go ahead and read the Bereshit section? And Lot went with him. Abraham went with him. Abraham took his wife, Sarai, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their wealth that they had amassed. And he sold Sarai to Haran. And they left to go to the land of Canaan, and they came to the land of Canaan. Okay, thank you. We'll have to be a little louder when he's singing over. We're reading, okay? You can sing. Hey, you can sing. We can sing like this. You can sing like that quiet. Hey. <laughs> Alright, I'm going on to the commentary. And you can read the next one too, Kylan, since that one was short. Uh, the Torah text goes on to account all the trials of Avraham leaving Haran to the Akedah, the binding of Isaac. Are you okay? What are you going to do? Because you can't just smash over the computer. Okay? Can't just climb up the computer. All the way to the Akedah, the binding of Isaac. There are ten trials. Ten being the number of testing. You will find it all through scripture, and it will often be related to tribulation and struggle. We're not going to the park today, baby. We'll go try and go this week. Oh, yeah, you, to the park. Oh. Oh, yeah, you can go ahead. Go on. Um, so, the first test of Abraham is to answer in faith the call of the Lord for him to take up his mission in the land of Canaan. The very next thing that happens is famine in the land, the second test. Abraham and Sarai go down to Egypt, and Paro takes Sarai into his house to become a wife for him. <laughs> Trial three. Can she, he please have uh, whatever he's asking for for <laughs> Thank you. And then give it back to her when you're done, okay? When we read, we have to understand that Lot is still faithfully by Avraham's side. When we realize that when they leave Egypt, there's no indication the famine has ended, we consider that Lot didn't have to continue on with Avraham, but he does. We know that God is blessing Avraham through these trials, and even though there is great distress over the abduction of Sarah, he leaves Egypt with great wealth. This foreshadows the children of Israel, who later are called from Egypt as a bride, and they empty it from Shemot 1235. That's beautiful. Huh? I, I will, when it's not interrupting, like it already just did. They requested from the Egyptians silver vessels, gold vessels, and garments. Hashem gave people the people favor in the eyes of the Egyptians, and they granted their request. So they emptied Egypt, bless you, with gold. And they, uh, sorry, I don't know what's going on there. Do, 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 do. All right, so they were granted these things with gold and all that. So they're leaving Egypt with gold and all that they will need to make a house where she, Israel, that is, and God can connect and dwell together. Because in Shemot, Exodus 25, 8, it says, They shall make a sanctuary for me so that I may dwell among them. Like everything I show you, the form of the tabernacle and the form of all of its vessels, and so shall you do. Perhaps Lot was following Avraham with his heart, perhaps with his head, knowing he too would be blessed in connection with Avraham and his relationship with God. This is your first warning, okay? Pencils are not toys. You're either drawing with them or, or you put them away and you listen quietly. Huh? I'll take it. That's mine anyway. Um, Catriel? Thank you. 
So perhaps he's following with his heart. Perhaps he's following with his head, knowing he'll be blessed as well. Either way, they leave Egypt together. What Avraham took up was gold and possessions. What attached itself to Lot was a glimpse of sin in an extremely idolatrous land. For after this stay, things change in the relationship. All right, Kylie, you can go ahead and read that Genesis bearer sheet text. Please. There was a famine in the land, and Abraham descended to Egypt. That's so hard. For the famine that's was hard. severe in the land. That's but hard. it occurred with. That's stubby. But it occurred that Abraham returned to Egypt. The Egyptians saw that the woman Sarai was very beautiful. When the officials of Pharaoh saw her, they lauded her for Pharaoh, and the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. And he treated Abraham well for her sake, and he acquired sheep, cattle, donkeys, slaves, and maidservants, female donkeys, and camels. Pharaoh summoned Abraham and said, What is this you have done to me? Why did you say she is my sister, so that I would take her as my wife? Now, here is your wife. Take her and go. Pharaoh gave men orders concerning him, and they escorted him and his wife and all that was his. Thank you. Um, can somebody please hand him another paper? So this is something y'all could do to help when you hear I paper, I paper, I paper. Give him a paper. That way we don't have to hear that ten times. Aww. Here you go. Alright. Thank you. Abraham has focus. He has a center, a moral compass, which leads him back to basics back to the point of origin, back to the place of revelation. Coming up from a place of trial and exposure to idolatry, he returns to the place where God had appeared to him on the outside of his journey to reconnect and call out for help and guidance. All right. Why don't you read that last one, Kailani, and then um, Malachi can read the psalm. Okay. Your turn to yes, please, 13. So Abraham went up from Egypt. He went with his wife and all that was his and Lot with him to the south. Now Abraham was very laden with livestock, silver, and gold. He proceeded on his journeys from the south to Bethlehem, to the place where his tent had been at first, between Bethel and Ai, to the site of the altar which he had erected there at first. And there Abraham invoked the name of the Hashem by name. Remember, if you have comments or questions, please ask them. That makes the learning that much more valuable. Malika, you know where we are, right? You're paying attention. Because usually you're the good question asker. And since I'm not hearing a single thing, I'm thinking you're probably not following along. Leora, you can't lay on the ground right now, please. You should be sitting up, paying attention. It's right no. below what it's you above. just read, yeah. Psalm 121, 1. Oh, yeah, it's right above it. Sit down, please. Don't be getting up anymore. Psalm 121. Is that what it is? I can't see it because yep. I turned to you to video, so I can't really see it. I raise my eyes One. to the mountains. Two. When I will I come? Will when else will come to me help? My help from Hashem, maker of heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to falter. Your guardian will not slumber. Behold, he will neither slumber nor sleep. The guardian of Israel, Hashem is your guardian. Hashem is your he will guard your soul. Hashem will guard your departure and your arrival from the sun. Thank you. All right, there's a picture of the herdsmen arguing. A simple reading of the following text leads us to picture Abraham and Lot with such an abundance of livestock 
that they are crowded in and there's not enough food for grazing. All this time, they've been able to live together. And as the blessings, i.e. wealth, has been exponentially growing, problems have cropped up. How often do we see this in our day? Relatively content and happy family struggling through wins the lottery. And the wealth causes the family to divide. Inheritance for a lost family member, God forbid, tears siblings grappling for, some, for more share apart in bitterness. Rivalry, jealousy, discontentment. What happened between Avraham and Lot, which causes them to part ways? The text does state that in connection to the abundant wealth, the land could not support them, but also they were not able to yakol, to be able literally or morally to live together. As we read, we will uncover the fact that Lot was drawn to sin. He moves his household to sin's door and tarries even upon leaving, leaving it as the smell of sulfur is already in the air. What was the problem? We see Avraham consistently ministering to all peoples, many from a life of idolatry. But to have this big of a problem with Lot, there must have been something he saw as futile as far as his attempts to change his nephew and his compulsion to be near sin. Surely he taught and molded him. Surely he tried to lead him in the ways of Hashem. But there was a threat to Avraham's household. Very nice. <laughs> To Abraham's household now, a threat which could would pro compromise the morality. Beautiful. Very nice. Very nice. And sanctity, holiness, of the space he was working to create for the king to dwell with them. And this threat had to be removed. Even as the herdsmen quarrel, reeve, this word meaning chiding, contending, or controversy, or strife, or adversary, or a contest, this is an expression of the relationship between the masters. The strife between kinsmen is manifest of the strife between the herdsmen. More proof the Torah gives us is the statement of the sinful nations who are dwelling there, right there in the land among them. This tells us that there is a bad example being set. Some are able to rise above it and go on with integrity. Others are attaching themselves to it and allowing it to rub off on them. This is why the relationship between Lo Avraham and Lot has become so strained. All right, Kylan, we'll have you read Bereshi and uh, Malachi. You're going to read Yermayahu, Jeremiah. So. Genesis 13, verse 5. Also Lot, who went with Abraham, had flocks, cattle, and tents. And the land could not support them dwelling together, for their possessions were abundant, and they were unable to dwell together. Hello over there. I'm ready to send you to your room. Yep. This has been three. You got no more chances, buddy. No more chances. None. Alrighty. Leora, what you're doing is very, 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 very rude. Okay. Well, then go on to your room, okay? Okay, then sit up like a human being. Sorry, Kylan. Okay, why don't you start over? I'm sorry, just loudly and clearly. Do not touch my computer. Oh, blanket. Yeah, there's a blanket right there on the couch. Verse 7. And they, there was quarreling between the herdsmen of Abraham's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. And the Canaanites and the Perizzite were dwelling in the land. Jeremiah 10 2. Thus says Hashem, do not learn from the way of the nations. Do not be frightened by the signs of heavens. Do the nations are frightened by them, for the practices of the nations are foolish. When one takes wood that he cut down from the forest, fashioned by an with an ads ads 
This is not my pencil. M bushes it in silver pencil. and gold. Pass flash more fast than my pencil. with nails and with hammers. So that it does not come apart. They were like being sculpted palm trees. Cold. They do not speak. Cold. They are carried about for they cannot walk. Do not fear them, for no, there is no one like you are, Christian. You are and you are great and your and your name is great in my We'll see. Abraham shows humility and grace as he approaches Lot. Surely having love for him and not wanting to cause him pain. He is not aggressive, although there is certainly a sense of necessity here. He allows Lot to choose his path and knows that whichever direction he takes from this point, they will not be together in the same way anymore. As soon as this separation occurs, God speaks to Avraham to encourage him that all the land has been promised to him. This lift occurs right before another huge challenge and trial, the war with the kings. I'll wait for you to make a lot of noise with the chair, so I'll wait till you're done. Lots of noise, lots of moving around. You done? You black. Are, are you finished? Did, did you take those out of my school supplies? Stop that, okay? No, no, no. I'll take them, please. Those are mine. Thank you. You just help yourself to everything, I guess. Printer paper, stacks and stacks of printer paper. Don't put your foot on my computer. Um, okay, so the War with the Kings is the next trial. The text always reminds me of Jacob. <laughs> Jacob and Laban, who finally part ways after many long years of trial and strife. Really? I don't, like, remember that idea, but that's really true. Um, when Jacob takes the steps to separate himself from the sinful household, an unjust rule of the deceptive and arrogant Laban. Yeah, Lavana is our cat's name. That's the female version of Lavon, yes. And he was white in that he was transparent. You knew what he was about, right? You could see it clearly, like a bright white light. All right, um, you're going to go in your car seat in the other room now, okay? So let's get in it. It's right down there. You go ahead and get in because you're not being very nice. Do you want to sit with me or do you want to go in the car seat? Do you want to sit with me here? If you want to sit with me here, you can't be crying and being all naughty, okay? Sin equals separation from the commands of God, i.e. departure from the Torah. After this separation, the angels of the Lord encounter him. This is Jacob we're talking about. Perhaps to strengthen him for the next and perhaps biggest challenge. Facing his fears, Ima, meeting head Ima, on that which he had run from for so long, his Ima, past, Ima, meaning Esau. It can be difficult to separate from our past, from people we are bound to. But if these lives cause us to stumble in our walk with God or run contrary to his evident will, as expressed by his word, it is crucial that we make these separations. Even in living Kadosh, wholly set apart in our own households, to be examples therein, we cannot physically remove ourselves. Well, when we cannot physically remove ourselves, we will, uh, will, eh, I don't know what I was getting at there. Basically, what will be the steps that allow God 
Oh, they will. Okay, all right. Making the steps in our own households to be holy set apart people will be the steps. Taking those steps will allow God to come to us there and prepare us for what is ahead. He never leaves us unattended or unarmed. He's saying he wants to eat. Okay, well, there's, there's lots of leftover okay, breakfast. Um, <laughs> it's all greasy, yeah. crazy. Um, you need to take your vitamins. That's not a good sign. Okay. <laughs> all right. So let's have um, Kyla and you read. The next two sections of Bray sheet. So Abraham said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between me and you, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are kinsmen. Is not all the land before you? You can see what breakfast parts he wants, but he can't have anything else other than an apple. He can't have an apple? Other than an apple, but he's already cut one up in the bowl. Okay, here I'm. Alright, go ahead, Kyle, and we'll the next one too, please. Please separate from me. If you go left, then I will go right. If you go right, then I will go left. And Laban, Genesis 32, verse 51, and Laban said to Jacob, Here is this mound, and here is this monument, which I have cast between me and be in between you. This mound shall be witness, and this monument shall be witness, that I shall not may not cross over it to you past the mound. Well, may you cross over me past this mound and monument for evil. May the God of Abraham and the God of Mount Lord judge between us, the God of their fathers. And Jacob swore by dread of his father Isaac. And then Jacob slaughtered for a feast on the mountain and summoned his kinsmen to break bread. And they broke bread and spent the night on the mountain. Jacob went on his way and the angels of God encountered him. Huh, that's interesting. The God of Abraham and the God of Nahor. So you remember when you were saying, Kaitlin, this, I think it was last week, that you were thinking that Terah, their dad, was a believer, maybe? You know, like he was like already kind of looking because they were already heading towards Canaan, right? Mm -hmm. They were already leaving Babylon when he died in yes. Haran yeah. and then that's when God meets Avraham and here it says God of Nahor so it's like Avraham knew God God is God of his brother too then Nahor is his brother who yeah. died Terah's son yeah, I mean that's interesting that kind of backs up I think what you were saying which is really interesting to me all right so can you go take that to the sink, please? Go take that to the kitchen, please. I'm an answer. Take that to the kitchen, please. I heard men, somebody I'm mentioning a book called Man's Search for Meaning. Can you read that book? Yes. It is probably every human being should read that book. I do. You can You can read it. You probably read it pretty fast. Yeah. Um, it's what grade is the person in? It should be fine then. It's graphic because it's Holocaust, you know? Yeah. But it's I mean to your age it's it's not it's not yeah. Book is so good. All right, going on. Like the very garden of the Lord is the land that Lot gazes upon. He sees the very best, and without restraint or humility, he chooses the prime Jordan expanses. Throughout Scripture, when you read about the city life versus the field, it can be a metaphor for the secretive, built up by human hands, often corrupted and hectic, self-glorified dwelling versus the open, uncovered, and temporary existence with complete reliance upon the Lord. Lot chooses the Jordan land, yet he visits and rests in the cities, plural, of the plains. 
he calls these cities home and eventually ends up in Sodom, a place so wicked, God has it in his sight for destruction. The text itself says it is a place which is wicked and sinful exceedingly. Why would Lot come here? Why would he move in here? He has a family now. Why would he consider this to be an acceptable place for him to raise them? These questions, not right now, can give us clues as to the nature of Lot, his preferences, and how far he has strayed from his origins, his moral center, and his teacher, Abraham's example. Petriel, you're doing it again. You are going to be grounded for the rest of the evening. So when Shabbat is over, you're going to be straight in your room doing schoolwork or sentences because that's what you're choosing to do now. Um, I wanted to just say also, this is only one way of looking at it. Lot can be seen as a villain. He can be seen as a hero. He can He's just a very complicated person. So this is not the only way of talking about Lot, and I mean no disrespect. All right, let's go to the next section of text. So now there's four, uh, four scriptures, Malachi. So you and Kylan are going to switch off on them. So Kylan's going to stick with Bereshit first. You go Ezekiel, Kylan goes Psalm, and then you'll do the Bereshit 14, okay? So starting with Bereshit 13.10 is where Kylan's going to be next. Okay, you just scroll past it. Go up. So if you got Genesis it. Genesis 13.10. There we go. You're perfect. So she's going to read that, right, and then you're going to scroll. Down. Okay. All right, go on, Kylan. Genesis 13, verse 10. So Lot raised his eyes and saw the entire plain of the Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. Before Hashem destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of Hashem, like the land of Egypt, so on and so on. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan. And Lot journeyed from the east, thus they parted, one from his brother. Abraham dwelt no. in the land of Canaan, while Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent as far as Sodom. Now the people of Sodom were wicked and sinful toward Hashem exceedingly. Ezekiel 38, 20. They will quake before me, the fish of the sea, the birds of the heaven, the beasts of the field, every creature mm -mm, that is mm -mm, on the ground, and every human being that is on the face of the <coughs> The mountains will be broken apart. Me, 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 and my heart yearn. God, the rock of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who removed you, those removed from you shall perish. You cut down all who stray from you. But as for me, God, nearness is my good. I have placed my trust in the Lord Hashem, Elohim, to recount all of your words. Did you notice that every the apostrophe what it, what are you saying you almost just knocked down my computer buddy we're not gonna do that right now no we're not sorry i'm not really sure it looks normal to me Five. All right, let's see. I think 
see somebody viewing. I am not sure if the comments are up, but if you want to say hi to us, we'll know you're there. And I can tell you where we're at on the reading. Um, on the blog, I put it in the description. There's a guy. If you scroll down, you'll see a guy walking up steps. Yeah, and you can see. See that picture there? Yeah. All right. So, yeah, you'll be able to. I'll, I'll let you. We will do that. We can pass the phone off to you in a little bit here. Um, so, the uh, under the guy walking up the stairs is a paragraph of commentary, and that's what I'm going to be reading now. Um, all right. Avraham rests aloof as he is in the vicinity of these warring kings. He does, uh, little does he know that he will soon be drawn into the conflict. An escapee of the battles flees and heads straight to Avraham with the news of the capture of Lot. Having placed himself so close to the flame, Lot has fallen into the fire and now his life is at stake. Avraham wastes no time. He assembles his army to faithful of faithful disciples and he does so quickly without hesitation he intelligently plans the stealth attack and pursuit why morally it is right to help those in need and despair those helpless and in distress emotionally it is normal to feel bound to a family member and to desire to help them in times of trial avraham is upright in numerous ways and is doing the right thing but there's more to it than this alone he puts his life and the lives of the 318 men with him to save a man he had parted ways with intentionally because he sees something in Lot. Abraham saw in Lot potential, and that is why he kept him close for so long, ministering to him, teaching him, protecting him, and sharing of all the blessings, even a choice parcel of the covenantal land. Potential, but more so than this. God tells, tells us that Abraham is a prophet. In Bereshit 20, in verse 7, it says, Return the man's wife, for he is a prophet. So what he sees in Lot is perhaps not the great potential being reached in his own generation, but perhaps far into the future. He knows something good will come from Lot. So he comes to his rescue. The thought that Avraham might have seen the Messiah Yeshua makes it all the more clear why he got up quickly and with force and faith and came to the aid of Lot. Lot has to exist, for his existence is vital to the coming of the Messiah. What might we, as friends, community, or family members, be overlooking in our own brethren? God sees great potential in all of us, and it is the right thing to do to follow the example of Avraham Avinu, assuming the greatness and striving to encourage, nurture, protect, and preserve this potential in everyone. Who knows what the future might hold for any one person? It is our duty to at least put forth our best effort to bring them back. What's that? Yes, please. Uh, she's going to the restroom. She should probably read the next one when she gets back. And if you want to read that one, please, nice and loud and clear. They, then there came a fugitive and told Abraham the the Irvi who dwelt in the plains of Mamre, the Amorite, the brother of Eshkel, the brother of Anner, these being Abram's allies. And when Abram heard that his kinsman was taken captive. He armed his disciples who had been born in his house. 318, he pursued them as far as Dan. He, with his servants, deployed against them at night and struck them. He pursued them as far as Ola, which is to the north of Damascus. He brought back all the possessions. He also brought back his kinsman, Lot, with his possessions as well as the women and the people so I didn't realize this it says everyone who was born in his house mm -hmm. not the ones brought with him mm -hmm. so only the ones born into his but what do you think that means 
Like, you think they were all babies? No, I'm saying... When they grew up? No, yeah, well, yeah, but I mean... You know the concept of born again? Yeah, but... What, what does born again mean? Like, I thought it was... Like, being born again means to believe on, like, things. To believe what? To believe that... Um... Just say if you say you start out as a non-believer, Yeshua, and then you believe that's like being born again. Right? That's a good way of looking at it. Yes, absolutely. So it could be. So we're all. You can sit beside him. Actually, go ahead and sit beside him, please. Hi. Set that down. We're we're talking right now. She's through it. So, when we're talking about. We're born, right? Like everybody can, anyone can be born. So you're born into a physical life, right? As a baby. Yeah. You grow up. Born again is when you're born into the Lord. It's a different thing, right? Mm-hmm. One thing I've been noticing or thinking about is yes, there may be a point of decision where you're like, yeah, this is when I've decided to believe in God. But being born again is a thing that's happening over and over and over and over as you're allowing, you know, Yeshua to refine your life. After a fall, stop. Here, go ahead and give me the phone. I, I, here, you come sit over here. I, I, I want you to come sit over here. Look what trying to scroll down. What I'd like for you to do would be to come sit over here now. God, so no. after a fall... I feel there's a there's a renewal. If there's repentance and change and renewal, then that's another period of being born again. So what I'm saying is, I think that this is saying the people that were born in his house, I mean, it's the ones that came to faith because of his ministry. That's what I think. Hi. You're, you're going to push my computer down, and I'm not going to nurse you till bedtime, okay? <laughs> I know. Mm. Okay, does that mean sense make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. Because um because if his armed disciples, <laughs> there's three hundred and eighteen of them and they're all at least of sort of varying age, so like eighteen up. Um they, it hasn't been but ten it's not even been ten years yet. So, that's why I don't think this is talking about babies that were born, you know, in his household. I think it has to do with the spiritual born. That's what I think. That's what I thought about being born into his house. Um, this is Grody. Don't do that. Yacker. He's trying to chew on his toenail like a monkey. I guess the monkeys do that. I don't know if they do. Or like a Never mind, I'm not going to say it. Okay, why don't you go ahead and do the next section. Oh, or Kylan's back. Do Psalm 71, 14 through 20 for us, please. And that was a great thing to bring out, Malachi. This is why I like when you pay attention. Why don't you sit up and continue to do so? As for me, I will always hope and I will yet add to your praise. For now shall I count your righteousness all day long, your salvation, though I know not their number. I shall come with the mighty deeds of the Lord, Hashem Elohim. I will mention your righteousness. You, you're alone. You alone? Oh God, you have taught me from my youth until this moment. I declare your wonders, and even until an old, until old age, and holiness, O oh God, forsake me not until I proclaim your strength to the generations. Your might to all who have not yet come. And your righteousness, O oh God, is unto the high heavens. You who have done many great things, O oh God. Who is like you? You who have shown me many grievous troubles. Revive me again. The voice went. I love you too. The voice went. Oh, that's a bracelet? That's very cool. Yes, he made us the master. You want to look at it now? <gasps> that's beautiful. What is it? Oh, I see a sun. What is that? What is it? A rose? Oh, that's so beautiful. 
beautiful picture. Okay, I'm gonna show the latest pictures. There's this one. And it says, this means I love you, Ema, which is pretty sweet. And then you are, I have another one here. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right, so that's a nice artwork. Let's keep going with the artwork. And not right now. This is not a reaction that's ever appropriate in this house. Have a seat, buddy. Um, I don't know. You've been getting up quite a bit, so I'm not sure if I would define it as good. Okay. Lot has returned after his liberation and restoration by the miraculous victory of an aged Avraham and small army over the armies of five kings to Sodom, the connection which caused this danger and threat in the first place. We can see that even though Lot has become bound to the people and wi uh, wickedness of Sodom, because he calls these men his brothers in 197, he still strives to use the lessons and attributes he learned from Avraham. They are still a part of each other in very real ways. The impression Avraham made on Lot has endured even in this sinful place. Note the similarities in the greeting, hospitality, and service. So that was that's something interesting. I guess I didn't quite either remember or whatever is that even after all this drama Lot goes back there it's like I would not go back there after all this I know especially after he saved me and be like okay I I can see you're for real about me maybe it's time for me to get real with you about you you know all right but um but what the blog is making Apparently not. Not when you have your own goals, you know, when somebody's like, I'm, some people, like, ha when you get something in your head, whatever his mission or his goal was, it's like nothing's going to get you off it. Not even, like, a very stark reality. Yeah. You know, lots of reality checks come in. It doesn't matter. You still keep going on that path, whatever it may be, depending on the person, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I know I can be that way. Everyone, I'm sure. All right. So, but the point was to say that even even so, Lot is still taking what he learned from Abraham's household into the place where he's at, and we can see that in these next two texts. So, Kylan, read the first one. Yeah, and then you can read the next one. Okay. He lifted his eyes and saw, and behold, three men were standing over him. He perceived, so he ran toward them from the entrance of the tent and bowed toward the ground. And he said, My lord, if I found favor in your eyes, please pass not away from your servant. Let some water be brought and wash your feet and your fine hands and your So Abraham hastened the tent with Sarah and said, Hurry, three sayas of meal, fine flour. Knead and make cakes. Then Abraham ran to the cattle, took a calf tender and good, and gave it to the youth to prepare it. He took cream and milk and the calf, which he had prepared, and placed these before them. The two angels came to Saddam in the evening, and Lot was sitting at the gate of Saddam. Now Lot saw and stood up to meet them. He bowed down his face to the ground, and he said, Behold now, my lords, turn about please to your servant's house. Spend the night and wash your feet, and then wake up early and go your way. And he urged them very much, so they turned toward him, and they came to his house. He made a feast for them, and baked matzo, and they ate. Those are his daughters. She's back behind. No, no, I see her, but is it just starting from the Yeah, end? it's obviously not happened yet. So we're just talking about the picture on the blog of Lot and his daughters. And Alright, so it is Hashem. 
Shem's mercy on Lot, which allows for his escape. He lingers in the wicked, sinful city walls until the angels of the Lord literally take him by the hand and drag him from the place in Hashem's mercy on him. The judgment is set and destruction imminent. There is no reason to look back and they are all, in fact, warned against this very thing. Don't look back at the sin, the city, the cauldron of beings from young to old who have departed completely from the moral, honest, charitable and loving guide of the lord mocking him in their disobedience they have chosen death the example lot set in his home has infected the intention and allegiance of his own wife she peers behind him for one last look at what she couldn't just break away from and leave behind lot himself has become has been humbled I'll be showing you his another picture. It's so beautiful. So beautiful. Lot himself has been humbled. Once proud, self-righteously, standing beside Avram, gazing over his vast and abundant choice of the Jordan Plains. Now, frightened and anxious, he pleads with God to allow him a small place in a small city. And God... What do you think you're doing? No. Oh, so you want to and go back God to agrees to give grace to him in that place. Yeah, isn't that interesting that he doesn't be like, let me go to Abraham. Like, let, like now would be the time. All right, I'm going to go check out Abraham maybe, now. Maybe he thought so. And maybe it is based on what Abraham said. You go left, I go right. You go right, I go left. Just we're not going to come back together. He kind of did say that. But he did help him. Aww. What is this a picture of? Show it there. Okay. Uh, I'll show you. This picture. It says love. And I think I know this is our own version of Miriam. That was me. He <laughs> is with the Lord now. Let's go put this back. See, that's why I asked you to put that cup to the kitchen, buddy, because I knew that was going to be happening. <gasps> Look at that. So nice. That's so nice. Look at that. Wow. Good job, Avanezer. Good job, Avanezer. All right. Um, let's have Malachi. Oh, oh, oh. Stop touching the I'm turning the camera over so don't, you know, be yourselves too much and beat each other up. Camera's on you. Malachi, let's have you read that next section of the Torah, please. Mm -hmm. And just as someone was breaking by the angels, the angels Daddy. urged Lot on, saying, no. Get up, take your wife and your two daughters who are a present, lest you will be swept away because of the sin of the city. Still he lingered, so the men grasped him by his hand. His wife's hand and the hand of his two daughters, and the Hashem's mercy on him. And they took him out and left him outside the city. And it was as they took them out, one said, Flee for your life. Do not look behind you, nor, your, nor stop anywhere. In all the plain, flee to the mountain, lest you be swept away. God said to them, Daddy. You be swept away. Lot said to them, Please know, my Lord, see now, your servant has found grace in your eyes, and your kindness is great. But, which, but why did wit me to save my life? But I could not escape from the mountain, lest the evil touch itself to me, and I die. And behold, it is the city with me enough to escape. There is yes, a beat back. small yes, a beat back. Is not small. I will live. And he replied to him, Behold, I have no to you consideration, even regarding the city, that I have not overturned the city. You have got this destruction. Yeah, Emma. Thank you, buddy. So, yeah, you made a comment earlier. He's still looking to go to a city. <laughs> It's a good comment. It's interesting. Um, all right, 
going on. It was Abraham who stood before God and humbly executed a sort of dance with words as intercession for the wicked Sodom. Not alone for the innocent who weren't to be found, for Lot and his family. And you'll find that in Genesis 18, 12 through 33. Their number being less than 10. The punishment was enacted. After these things, Abraham looks looks out at the place once green and flourishing, now pungent with the odor of sulfur, still warm and smoking from judgment. Verse 29 clearly relates to us the exact and explicit reason why God sent Lot from amid the upheaval and delivered him. It said because God remembered Abraham. Abraham and Lot are bound. Lot is crucial because of whom his descendants will be. But it is always in connection with the relationship God has with Abraham. Namely, the promise, the covenant, the reason Yeshua would be sent on his first coming to gather the lost sheep of the house of Israel from Matthew fifteen twenty four. All right. Well, that's a crazy picture. Kylie, go ahead and read the next section of text, please. Genesis 19? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Are you sure? Uh, it's right above the burning picture, okay. 1924. Hashem had caused sulfur and fire to rain upon Sodom and Hush. Gomorrah. Now Hashem had caused sulfur and fire to rain upon Sodom and Gomorrah from Hashem out of heaven. He overturned these cities and the entire plain with all the inhabitants of the cities and the vegetation of the soil. His wife carried behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Abraham arose early in the morning to the place where he had stood before Hashem. So it was when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham. So he sent Lot amidst the upheaval when he overturned the cities in which Lot lived. Had lived. Lot, Lot's daughters are described in the commentaries as modest, righteous women whose actions were nobly motivated. Thinking the rest of the world had been destroyed in the upheaval of Saddam, and that Zoar had been spared only while they were there, they felt it was their responsibility to save the human race by bearing children. Among their descendants would be Ruth, ancestress of David, and Naamah, queen of Solomon and mother of Rehoboam. Lot, on the other hand, had other motivations. He may have been intoxicated enough not to notice what had happened the first time, but the second? Where is all the wine coming from anyway? Yet again, we learn a valuable lesson about the God we serve. He can use every single one of us, all works in progress, to make great things happen. We may not always understand his ways or the steps we have to go through on the path which he sets out before us, but rest assured, his intentions are always for the good. That's me. All right, Malachi, you can read the next section of scripture. No, uh, let me see, where are we? Genesis 19.30, now Lot went up from Zohar. I see your hand. The hand, there's like, it's a, there's a picture of a hand, and then there's one, two, three, the third paragraph up from there. Genesis 19. Yeah, you go ahead and while he finds where we're at. Genesis 19, verse 30. Yeah. Follow along, please. So this doesn't happen. 
And this is my candy. First candy. Is there a gravel? Yep. Now Lot went up from Zoar and settled in the mountain. It was two daughters with Aja, him, for he was afraid Aja, to remain in Zoar. Because Lot was a king, he was his two daughters. The older one said to him, Our father is ill, and there is no man in the land who can marry us in the usual manner. Come, let us ply our father with wine and buy with him, that we may give life to his offspring for our father. The older boy's son, she called his name Moab. He is the answer to the of Moab until this day. And the younger one also bore a son, and she called him Benami. He is the ancestor of the children of Moab until this day. So we talked about this before, I think, on a different year, maybe even last year. I think we said maybe it wasn't so much that they thought there was no no males left on the face of the planet, but they just figured, because they said in the usual way, they figured they were all, like, defiled because of their nasty sexual behaviors already. So, that kind of makes sense, right? They thought... Okay, it looks like there's Ruth, so Kylie, you read Ruth for us, please. And y'all do understand from both daughters come descendants of the Messiah. Is that correct? Do you guys understand that? How important these unions were, even though they seem completely wrong? <laughs> and so Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife, and he came to live. Okay. <laughs> okay, start over with her. And so Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife, and he came to her. Hashem let her conceive, and she bore a son. And the woman said to Naomi, Blessed is Hashem, who has not left you without a redeemer today. May his name be famous in Israel. He will become your life restorer to sustain your old age for your daughter-in-law, who loves you as born mom, and she is better to you than seven sons. Naomi took a child and put it in her bosom, and she became his nurse. The neighborhood woman gave him a name, saying, A son is born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He was father of Jesse, the father of Jesus. Hold on. Nurse as in... Um, it can be either, really. Yeah, so how does an old lady nurse him, is what you're asking? Um, is that what you're asking? I think Ruth would actually I mean, Yeah, and a nurse can refer to a wet nurse, okay. as in nursing. I just think it's funny that I said that it, it, it held it. In her bosom, and she became his nurse. Yeah. Because sometimes when a woman has already had children and holds a, a baby, like that can happen. Like that can stir up, like that natural capacity can come back around. But back then, I'm pretty sure a lot of the women kept their milk going just so that they could, like, because guess what? They didn't have, like, Similac formula. Oh, you can watch my baby. Thank you. The Cinelax in the fridge. You know? It was like, no. Like, they kept their milk going so that, oh, you can watch my baby while we go have our date night. But they had their milk still going. So, that's my understanding. Cinelax in your thing. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess. Let's see. All right, there's a there's a section from Matthew. From Matthew. Malachi, Matthew 1. Boaz was the father of Obed, Obed. The father of Esau. Esau the father of David. David the king, David the father of Shlomo, his mother. And the wife of Ura, Shlomo, the father of Rechaim, Rechaim, the father of Aiyah, Echad was the father of Elisha, Elisha was the father of Matan, Matan was the father of 
So this is the genealogy at the beginning of Matthew, basically showing that um, hmm? nobody anymore. I don't know. I can never know who's on. They just sign on. Most of them click on and off. It's like, yeah. Oh, this is about the Bible. Never mind. Bye. <laughs> The, underneath the hand is a little commentary and then more verses. I think about this complex relationship. It's an interlude of song. He name a Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. In unity. La 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 In unity. In unity. La 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 Very nice. That's great. Okay, we sing that one already. And we're gonna take a pause, okay? Go sit down, please. Okay. He already sang that one too. So, Aaron, go back to your spot. So, I think about this complex relationship. The vast contrast in personalities. I said, sit down. The undeniable connection. Aaron was devoted to setting a good example, the picture he testified to of the Lord Most High. Messiah told us that he saw Yeshua and was glad. You cannot get more paper. That is not allowed. It's not allowed. Just because your sister did it and disobeyed doesn't mean you get to as you continue to just do it. You just continue to just do it. You just went ahead and just did it. It's okay. I guess Kylie will get it for you. Um, let's see. Messiah told us that shh, that Abraham saw Yeshua and was glad. Shh, perhaps this is the desire and goal which allowed Abraham to endure and thrive despite all his trials. If he saw Mashiach in Lot, it's no wonder. I'll take that. Thank you. It's no wonder he tried so very hard to preserve the life of Lot much more ways than one. 
if Yeshua is in all of us, all of his, how can we strive to see this in each other and thus value each other more? All right, Colossians 1, 27 through 29. And then John 8, Malachi. You can do those next two. And then Kylan will do Romans. To them God wanted to make known how great among the Gentiles is the glorious greatness of his of the secret. And the secret is this. The Messiah is untied. United. United with you people. With you people. And that rests your hope of glory. We for our part proclaim him. We warn comfort and teach everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone as having reached the goal united with the Messiah. It is from this toil from this that I toil, striving with all energy that he stirs up in me, my me. Abraham, your father, was glad that he would, be, would see my day, that when he was a good day. Oh, Kylan, you were going to do Romans, right? That's a cool picture, too, huh? Romans 4. Verse 17, for if because of the offense of one man, death ruled through that one man, how much more will those receiving the overflowing grace that is, the gift of being considered righteous rule in life through that one man, Yeshua the Messiah. In other words, just as it was through one offense. In other words, just as it was through one offense that all people came under condemnation, so also it was through one righteous act that all people come to be considered righteous. For just, just as through the disobedience of one man, many Many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the other man, many will be made righteous. Uh, man, that's such a good I'm verse. Take him out and, no, I think he, I mean, take him out of his room and put him. It, there's just a prayer, and then it's and then it's over, so don't worry about it. Oh yeah, I remember. Lord, you have charged us all to be servants, to live a life that brings light, honor, and glory to your great name. To be witness and bear testimony that you are unchanging, eternal and true, and that you alone are trustworthy and keep your promises. In all our relationships, for all our wanderings, I ask that you hide not your face from us. That you cause us to love each other more, to desire to teach and profess to everyone your greatness and your compassion i ask in the name of yeshua that you with a strong hand reach into our lives and restore our marriages families homes communities and relationships within the body of believers and as we go out into the world to bear that light the light of messiah and each one of his people let us shine and be unswayed let us remember he is with us at every moment nothing is hidden from him and we are never alone help us to get through all the trials we face for the good always for the glory of your kingdom already being constructed in our hearts at this very moment Amen. Oh, 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 oh. Blessed are you, Lord, my God, King of the universe. You have blessed us with your Torah of truth. You have blessed us with the entire counsel of your living word. You alone have planted among us life eternal. Blessed are you, Lord, my God. And everybody say Shabbat Shalom.